things with the shipping are looking really, really, really sketchy. We knew Mombasa would be sketchy. We didn't think it was going to be that sketchy. We just tried to find the shipping company. They should have an office here in Mombasa and we're at the location, but there's nothing. Things went from bad to worse. Um, we started the day pretty positive, then it went down really fast. Um, at the moment, we are not really sure we will get a car at all. This is like how bad it is right now. Uh, agent that we were talking to so far, he is not taking his phone or his phone is off and uh, the container is going to arrive tomorrow. Wait, how did we get here? This is where we left off the last time. After a couple days in Aqaba, we went to Dubai. We arrived in Abu Dhabi and we are taking a bus to Dubai. And stayed with Mohammed and Ali. Both are from Syria, working currently there, supporting their families at home. We had a blast. Good morning. Mohammed, prepare some okra with tomato. Whoa. Cooking together, exploring the city. And enjoying the pool. Way too soon we had to leave. We are on our way to the airport. And went to Zanzibar. We had time to relax a bit and enjoy the beach. We didn't do much other than snorkeling, editing and researching about Africa and what was lying ahead. After a week we left the island towards Mombasa to try to address customs and paperwork before the container would arrive. Welcome to Kenya! We just tried to find the shipping company. They should have an office here in Mombasa and we're at the location, but there's nothing. This is where things went sideways. We paid quinoa in Nairobi um, already a week ago and uh, it looks like he didn't forward any money to Jordan. So right now the guys in Jordan don't want to release the flight and um, we cannot get hold of anybody here in Kenya. The issue is that we didn't get the bill of letting in um, Jordan. That means we have no proof that the container is from us and we have no way at the moment to recover the container. So how does shipping normally work? You get an agent in origin that books for you the container, handles customs clearance and so on. You pay him and you get a bill of lading, the main document during shipping. It states that you are the owner of the freight and that you are allowed to get it back in destination. You go to destination with all the papers, you get a second agency that handles for you everything in destination, transport of the container, release and custom clearance. In our case it was a little different. We couldn't find an agency in Jordan, so we went with one in Mombasa, Anchor Jet Logistics, that offered the complete package out of Kenya. They then subcontracted La Vega Logistics in Jordan that handled everything on the Jordan side. In the end, it turned out that Anchor Jet Logistics was a scammer. They didn't follow through with what they promised and also didn't pay the Jordan side. New position of the vessel. It's just in front of Mombasa. Now when we need time, it is early. We had quite a busy day today. We went to a shipping agency that got recommended by some other overlanders that shipped through them out of Kenya to, I think, Jeddah within yeah. the last week. So we at least knew they were trustworthy. And yeah, it was actually really, really good. Like from the 
first very moment we explained our situation they were like you're safe here let's find out how to solve the issue let's talk about it how did what did you do until now what can we do from this very moment to solve the problem and get your money back as well yeah um yeah so they checked if with the freight with the container everything is okay um they contacted the shipping line and checked with them as well what we affirmed yesterday that um there is a fraud is almost proven by today because we got the invoices from the guys from Jordan from mm -hmm. Akaba and the uh, invoices from Akaba alone are way higher than what the guy in Kenya Kinoa um, offered mm -hmm. us or charged us and also what we paid so by knowing that we know that um, he never planned actually to uh, pay the guys in Jordan uh, we still don't know if we can trust the agent in Jordan. Until now, the conversation we had was very clean, transparent, but that, of course, it's not a proof in the end of um, legality. So we need to be 100% sure. At this moment, we left already uh, so much money. We give so much money. So at the moment, what we are trying to do is talk to the shipping line in this case cma cgm the agency here is trying to get an invoice the invoice that actually the agency in akaba received to direct it to us so we will be able to pay it from here and therefore we will be able to release the cargo by ourselves in mombasa we just talked to adi on the phone he is the forwarder uh, or the shipper in Jordan. We informed him about all the information that we have, that Kinoa here in Kenya is a scam and we asked him to assist us in um, resolving the situation that we would like to pay the freight here in Kenya and not through him in Jordan. And um, yeah, he said he's checking on that. Other than that, he is really insisting on us paying everything and that uh, we did a mistake doing a, a request to Frightnet, but uh, he's not acknowledging that he also worked together with a fraud that came through Frightnet to him without further checking him. And, um, yeah. and he's a company. He's a company. He um, went in, he... Uh, invested uh, or he paid for everything on the job side. he paid for the shipping um, as well so he is in with a lot of money as well um, and yeah he basically wants us to pay everything uh, and he as a company will even get a small margin from it which I think is not the way uh, you should deal with that especially um, when he's talking to us as a customer. Guess who arrived? <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> we are another day in the agency here in United East Africa warehouses. Um, sadly, today Jordan has holiday. It's Friday, so most probably they will not give an answer regarding the changes in the bill of lading and we will not be able to figure out today but we are going to go right now to the shipping line to CMA CGM to see if at least they can meet us and understand that we are just <laughs> a couple of just tourists that want to get our cars in the country and that we are real people and that we are the ones uh, suffering the situation so maybe we have a bit more power against um, what the shipper can say uh, regarding these changes. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> I just communicated with him. Yeah, he says I'm in Qatar. I said, the lucky guy. <laughs> we are back in the apartment um, after being with CMA CGM. Um, it was just a meeting to to get to know each other, 
she um, is doing everything possible to get the guys from Jordan cooperating. Um, but yeah, it was, I think, great that she saw that we are actually uh, individuals, that we are not a company behind. And, um, let's see if tomorrow, even if there's half day in Jordan, maybe there's news from, from the shipper and CMA, CGM can change that from, yeah, right prepaid to freight collect. That would be awesome. Still, we will not be able to do anything until Monday, like physically, because then we enter here in the weekend and doesn't matter <laughs> what happens. And with the payment, uh, yeah, physically the port will be not um, working. We were not sure until now, but the ship arrived today or in the, in the port and it's going to unload the containers tonight. So that gave us a bit of time as well. As well. Yeah. So we had to spend another weekend in Mombasa. We used the time to see a bit more of the city, but we were desperately waiting on a feedback of Jordan that they would make our life more easy and let us pay in Mombasa. We were waiting on the feedback of Jordan. Ali reached out to us this morning. He told us um, that they will not release our freight and they will not let us pay through Kenya, which is a problem for us. They basically force us to pay everything that happened in Jordan, uh, even if we don't have a contract with them or anything. And the, the prices are, or the costs are way above what we were expecting. So um, basically what the company is doing, even if the sh shipping company in Jordan got scammed as well from Kinoa, they are letting us pay everything. They're not uh, even dropping a penny of the invoice and they're really not cooperative. So um, yeah, this is causing us a lot of headache. After several meetings with CMA, CGM and also back with the agent here in Mombasa, it looks like there's a new way we can get hold on the cargo. Most probably we will be able to pay directly to CMA CGM and they will be paying the agent in Jordan. This is maybe the safest way for us. Still, we are not 100% sure that the agent in Jordan is legit, that it's um, a company that is doing the business they, they are doing. So for us, it's the safest to pay directly to the shipping line. Um, we are waiting for an invoice. At the moment, the invoice is directed to uh, the shipping line in Jordan. It needs to be changed to uh, Mombasa. And as soon as we get the invoice, we will be able to make a bank transfer. Sadly, because it's an international bank transfer, it could take between two and five days, which could put us again in a bad situation because they Holidays are just around the corner. Today is Tuesday and on Saturday is 
Saturday, uh, the weekend, Saturday and Sunday is Christmas. So let's hope that we can do it as fast as possible and we would get the car and motorbike before the holiday. So we were able to pay in the end through our main bank, which is not how we wanted to do it because last time it took too long the bank transfer to go through internationally, but this is what it is. The container was on the ground in Mombasa. Finally, it seemed like things started to move. Most probably we will be able to open the container and see the cars. We cannot get them off, but we are at least able to see them. <laughs> so it's got to go, um, It was a great relief to be able to open the container, see the car and the motorcycle and know everything is in a good shape. Having paid Jordan and the shipping, we now needed to pay the Mombasa side. To not delay things further, we needed cash. A lot of cash. We have the bill of planning. After more than 20 days, we have it. We can get our car on the motorbike. The longest hours of waiting started. The time was moving painfully slow. And there was no sign of a truck with our container. from the CFS here to the offices to be able to unload the car and the motorbike. It's really last minute. We need to return the container today to the depot so we don't pay extra charges for the merge to the shipping line. And it's already like 5.30, nearly 6 in the afternoon and everything starts closing. So we will see if we make it. The container is here! The motorbike went down just from the transport because yesterday was perfectly straight.
what a relief to have the car and the motorcycle back, one month after we loaded them in Jordan, on November 24th. Just a couple of hours before we had to pay extra charges for blocking the container too long or the harbor would shut down for Christmas break. A big thank you goes to Abraham, Victor, Mike and John from East African Warehouses to make all this possible on the Mombasa side. here for the night because it's very late and there's no chance we can go anywhere now. That's it for this week's episode. I hope you enjoyed it. See you next time where we finally start to explore Africa. We learned a lot about shipping scams in Mombasa. We can only warn you to grab a company with a too competitive rate out of Mombasa. The guys like Kinoa Richards from Anchorjet Logistics or Citadel Smart Logistics are scammers.